I think Mr. Rajaratnam's biggest contribution is as a visionary. He was the visionary that put out a vision, but he was also the one who gave the intellectual arguments for some of our foreign policy positions, as well as some of our domestic positions. He literally put Singapore on the map. Uh, you know, he was the one who defined the principles of Singapore's foreign policy, and these principles continue to be uh, relevant to this day. Well, he was our founding foreign minister, a job he had for 15 years. So we must give credit to him for having laid down the founding principle of our foreign policy. We must also give him credit for having mentored the first generation of our diplomats. Yeah. Um, bringing together all the different um, diverse cultures, races, and I think allowing us to have a vision that somehow all of those differences um, could be amalgamated into one coherent and cohesive country. Mr Rajaratnam was a founding leader who was pivotal in shaping our national ideology and in building up our sense of national identity. His lifelong quest was for a Singaporean Singapore and that's encapsulated in the National Pledge uh, which he drafted. It came at a time when the country was, you know, um, in turmoil, the region as well. He put Singapore on the map. And he identified that one of the major tasks uh, facing Singapore was how to transform this small island of transient immigrants into a society of permanent settlers. All people in Singapore will be regarded equally the, 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 the ethnicity, the religion, the culture, the language will be recognized on equal footing uh, with regard to all Singaporeans. So we thought that provided a very sound philosophy for the new nation state of Singapore. And we were excited because that gave us a good premise, you know, to build the community as part and parcel of the larger Singaporean society. When he was a minister, a minister of culture, he introduced the Gotong Royong and Anekam Raya. These are the very significant uh, philosophy for Singapore to unite the people of four races, multiracial, multireligious community. And I just thought, you know, it was very prescient of him to identify this concept of a common identity and a shared cultural heritage as being vital to building a sense of belonging among Singaporeans. And he also contributed so much for the well-being of Singapore in the social, culture, politics, economics. I think his greatest contribution were all the ideas he gave to Singapore, the speeches he for instance, the one thing he talked about was Singapore as a global city. We had uh, our hinterland is in, in the world. And right now, as a scholar of cities, this continues to inspire me as I study different global cities. I think back to how this, this idea of global cities was so rooted in one of our Singaporean leaders from way back. You know, his ability to understand the world and how Singapore as a small country would fit into the world, I think um, did Singapore a great favour in, in terms of um, positioning itself in, in the world after 1965. I think he is one of the first generation leaders. I think the great event for him is set up the foreign ministry from scratch. In fact, he has done so much so that, you see, when we, when we joined the uh, General Assembly in 1965, he was the one who already do majority of thinking, strategy, and then the, uh, I mean, the, what, our, what are the policy we are going to do. He promoted Singapore as a circular society one nation and one people.